Hey, welcome to the Dr. Crooks Clubhouse here in Killarney, where we're here to preview the Kerry Petroleum Intermediate Football Championship and the Senior Club Championship as well. Now we'll go through the various groupings and we'll go through uh, the uh, games that are on this weekend. They start on Friday night and we have games on Saturday. No games on Sunday because of the All-Ireland Football Final. Uh, a lot of these games uh, will be brought to you live and exclusive on Clubber TV. So we hope that you will uh, either buy a particular game or purchase uh, the annual pass, which is great value now that we're starting the club championship. And of course, we have the county hurling championship final the following weekend on Clover. And we have the senior football championship later on and much more besides. Now I have a bunch of desperados as a panel uh, this week with me. They come from far and wide, ranging from uh, an absentee councillor uh, to a scribe from uh, Tarbert. Uh, no introduction needed for John O'Dowd, freelance uh, sports journalist with the Kerryman and uh, with other um, uh, papers as well. Uh, John was with us, of course, all through the hurling. So you're welcome, John. Um, Thank you, Martin. Gladly we won't, or sadly, we won't be talking about Tarbert uh, this week, or next week, I think, because uh, the last county final, if I remember correctly, last week, something he said, don't say that to me. So I just decided to remind him to put him in good form. Next, we have the man from Puck Fair, the man who's going to disappear for a week. Um, that's Aidan Clifford. He will be back sometime during Puck if he's allowed out of it. Um, he is the chairman of Long Rangers. He is also the PRO of Long Rangers. He writes for a local newspaper, Kerry's Eye, and uh, he's also involved as a commentator with uh, Clubber. So he's uh, multi-talented and um, he just doesn't like a few teams uh, in Mid Kerry, notably Milton Castlemaine. You're very welcome, Aidan. Um, yeah, I didn't want to reveal that. Just next. Jump a minute. Yes, next I have one of the one of the finest historians that this county has ever seen on Gaelic Games. Uh, he's, he is actually the, um, comes from the spa club. His family are immersed in spa football, so is he. Um, he also reports uh, on uh, various games for the Kerryman and uh, he follows the girls, sorry, the Camogie as well. He reports on uh, that. Now, Jimmy, as I said, has written a book, a couple of books actually, and uh, on the history of Kerry football, but just don't get him started in the Civil War uh, between Crokes and Legion. Um, now, uh, <laughs> Jimmy was also a man who uh, played um, at underage level, uh, he played hurling um, when he was about 14 and the first game he played somebody broke his nose with a slitter so he gave it up, quit. Uh, then his sister who was playing with Kerry Komogi, um, he actually, uh, she was hitting the ball out the back at the house above and uh, he broke his nose again so he gave up playing Komogi with his sister. Then he tried football uh, with St Brendan's College. Uh, and after one game, when, when he was taken off, uh, he went home with the football and never again played with them. Uh, so a very good sportsman, uh, very well versed, and he will be a voice of reason here where there is a lot of insanity on this panel. Moving on to one of the bright sparks of the panel, a young gun, superbly fit uh, from his gym work, um, a member of the Garda Shikana, so he has to be fit, top referee in the county, uh, he's number two behind Seamus Mulvihill, <laughs> and uh, he uh, has distinguished himself uh, playing football as well, uh, so much so that he gave up at 28. Uh, he's from the Glenfless Club, his mother, a lovely lady, Peggy, Peggy Horn, uh, and Evan uh, is uh, a student of the game and his views on this Intermediate Championship. He will know the background of a lot of the players, and particularly Glenn Flesk. That's Evan Horan. Now we come oh. to the man <laughs> right at the end. Last but by no means least, a larger-than-life figure, mind you, in the Killarney region, 
noted as a basketball star back in the day. Uh, more Americans left the country than Irish people during the famine because of the fact that he used to mark them on the basketball court and terrorize them, not with his basketball skills, but with his tongue. Now, having said that, <laughs> since then he has matured and grown up. Uh, he's in the famous uh, Niall O'Callaghan of the O'Callaghan uh, Forty Hotel, and he'll offer you a hotel at any stage, a hotel room down in the Forty if you're coming to Killarney uh, for a very reasonable rate. Now that that ad is out of the way, <laughs> I have to say that he's also a local councillor um, responsible for the desperate traffic situation in Killarney at the moment, uh, himself and his great friend Niall Kelleher. <laughs> now, uh, they often get, get mixed up because they're both Niles, but you can't get mixed up with this Niall. And Niall is involved with croaks. He's the only man that can tell Pat O'Shea what to do. Oh. But Pat O'Shea does the exact opposite, I can assure you. Uh, he's part of Jack, our Pat O'Shea's management team, has been involved with croaks all his life, a real uh, croaker. And uh, a while ago, he showed us the trophy cabinet. It was wonderful to see. There are currently two cups in there. Uh, but having said that, uh, multiple All Ireland winners, of course, Dr. Crokes. And uh, Niall is very witty. He's also a DJ and he's deeply involved in basketball. And he's a project for the uh, Stars, um, Kerry Stars. Kerry Stars. And he'll be starting that soon, a massive area up there in Dereen. So we might talk about that at a later time. So that's our panel. Um, I'm sure by now you know that they're a, a desperate group and uh, they will have different views and that's what it's all about. So we hope you will enjoy uh, the next 45 minutes or so um, if I can keep to the time schedule. Now we're going to start, lads, with the Intermediate Championship and we're going to start with, first of all, Group A, I suppose. Now, the Intermediate Championship this year, I would say, and every year is probably better than the senior championship in your respects because of the teams that are in it. And if you look at some of the teams, they have more county championship uh, titles won than some of the teams that are in the senior championship. It's just the way it is. They're in different divisions as well, division one, division two, um, etc. And uh, that means that we can never know who's going to win the championship. There are some hot favorites. The hottest favorite, of course, is Austin Stacks because they were in the county final in 2021, I think, lads, against Kenzo Rallies, and both of them now are in the Intermediate Championship. I know it's tough for outside people to uh, re, uh, start to understand the complex nature of Kerry with its various grades, but all I will say is that we have two championships in Kerry. We have the club championship, and then in September, we start with the, with the county championship, as it's called. So there is a difference there. There are no divisional teams involved, obviously, in the club championship, while in the county there are, and that's one of the differences. So we'll start now with Group A, I think, Intermediate Championship, and I suppose I'll start with the man nearest to me. Um, Ungeltuk are in this group, along with Austin Stacks, who are the favourites to win it, Glenbeg Glencair who were All-Ireland champions back in the 2016 lads, uh, around then, and uh, John Mitchells, who were um, one of the powerhouses in the 60s, obviously, and later in, and earlier, in uh, senior football, and now they're down playing intermediate, and they were relegated, along with Nagail, in Division 2 down to Division 3 this year, so things haven't been going well for the Mitchells. John? First of all, and I'm going to go around the group pretty quickly, uh, uh, our, our panel on the group first of all, and then we'll talk about the matches. So this group, it's it's a tough one, but you'd expect us and Stacks to come out of it. Yeah, I suppose, Mort, uh, just a precursor for uh, for our viewers, for all the groups, is, is that... Um, County League form earlier in the year can't really be taken into account because teams were uh, working off panels that didn't have their Kerry players, whether that was at under 20 level and senior level. Plus, we don't really know what to expect from any of these teams now as they start off this weekend because there are a certain amount of players that are injured for all panels and a certain amount of players that are still abroad, especially in America at this moment in time on the J1 visas and stuff like that. So we'll have a much better idea after the opening weekend of games 
what uh, the current health of each club and each team is. But to answer your question, straight away, Austin Stacks, they are the big guns in the competition. They're the favourites to win it out, so they're automatically the favourites to win this uh, opening group with John Mitchells, Glenn Bay, Glenn Carr and on Gale Talk. But I suppose we just have to go back 12 months for when Stacks were the favourites to win this competition last year and they ended up being knocked out in the semi-finals on penalties uh, by Fossa. I think with uh, the management that they have again, who've been kept on for a second year, Billy Lee, that there is going to be no second chances uh, for the Rock Street Club this season. It's a simple case of uh, win the Intermediate Championship and that's it. Yeah. Aidan, you being from Long Rangers, obviously, you would know a bit about Glenbeg Linkar um, and how they're going. Uh, can they, I think generally we feel that among us, and I'll find out soon, that Stacks will probably top that group. Do you think Glenbeg Linkar have a chance? They're 20 to 1 to win it out, which seems very big, but um, do you think they have a chance of uh, qualifying? I would, yeah. I think the second place is up between this fixture here and the first round. It's Glen Bay, Kinkara versus Long Gale. But the second place team will come from one of those two, you'd imagine. Mm-hmm. Glen Bay and Kinkara, of course, are, have been promoted back to Division 1 uh, this year. Uh, Who's in charge? I'm at the, uh, Peter Peter, yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, they have a couple of good young fellas there. They're, uh, they're a young guy, uh, Liam Smith, uh, a midfielder, um, who missed out on last year's chap- club championships and county championships. He's one to watch now. He's mm. a guy that could be midfield for me carrying the county championship this year, so he's one to keep an eye on. Yeah. Um, he's a great player. You of course, you've all the old stages there. Pat is Darren is still there? Darren is still around. Pat is still there. Yeah. Um, is he not? Is flying in the forwards at the yeah. moment. Kieran Tien's a player. He could literally give any outfield jersey to and he'd do a job for you. Yeah. But uh, he's flying in the forwards at the moment. Yeah. So they're, they're in great form. Uh, yeah. You say for league form mightn't be overly telling. But when a team is getting used to winning, it's a, it's a habit as much as losing is a habit. So they'll be, yeah, they'll be yeah. there, thereabouts, all right. They'll be there, thereabouts. Jimmy, uh, listen, um, John Mitchell's had hard times. You'd know a lot about their history. Obviously, in Gael Kirk, we'll have uh, Brino Berglik uh, back with them. But they have been struggling, talking to Daryl Kennedy earlier in the year. He said, yeah, uh, numbers-wise, they are struggling and uh, injury-wise as well. So... Uh, how would you look at it? Would you be a, a believer that Stacks are going to win it, that group? For, for me, I mean, Stacks were well on top in Division 2. They won the country under 21 championship, which is a big deal. There's divisional sides in that. Mm-hmm. They have lads who've been in a whole cup final. What's coming through at juvenile level in Shree Town? And I, I'm talking going down under 16, under 14. Next couple of years are going to be very interesting. I know Stacks and Rattan is were demoted and that's a big blow for football injury. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm telling you, look, they're coming back very fast, they really are. And look, for me, I, I think this is the easiest group of them all to call. I'm saying right now, I think Stacks should be looking at the Intermediate or Ireland. Yeah. They should. I, I tell you, they were down bodies last year, remember that. They were down an awful lot of bodies yeah. in one league and championship. They had that pick up knocks with the carry under 20s and so on. It was a tough year for them. Mm-hmm. They were penalty kick away from going through to the final. Mm-hmm. You put those bodies back in and see how much closer than a penalty kick they come to this year. I can't see anyone. Right. After that, let me blank her. Full strength. I, yeah. I definitely think that they should be coming out of the group. Yeah. But the question is, and the question for an awful lot of teams in the club championship, are they full strength? I know, yeah. In the middle of summer, it's already been a long year. That's zero away. It's tough going. Yeah. If Glen and Glen Carr have everyone, absolutely. I think they have the forwards to come through. On Gaelfield, I saw him in a couple of league games. Now, I know, as you said, Brian O'Bagan, he's going to be a huge player to have back. Mm-hmm. But I'm sorry, that for me, they were very reliant on Darren O'Shea for their scores. He yeah. was the one guy you were putting hand up. And that's not enough. Not at this level. This is intermediate. This is dog eat dog. In some ways, I genuinely think that this competition is tougher than the senior yeah. because you have absolutely no break. I I, I, I think I'm here that and Mitchell's are both going to struggle. I actually think the game this weekend will decide which one of them goes into the relegation battle. Yeah, there won't be any relegation I, from the divisions. I, I, I yeah. think that they have to go yeah. all out. 
Yeah, yeah, there won't be any relegation in any of the groupings this year. Um, so that it's a good year not to be playing well, if you know what I mean. Oh, it's one of the better sorry. years. I'm, yeah, I'm twenty. The no, the no bottom. Oh, no, no. Oh. There is no relegation in any uh, grouping at all. That was by the uh, the the the, the championship committee. Twenty twenty four. There will be no relegation from senior, intermediate, or premier junior club championship in twenty twenty four. Winners will be promoted from the intermediate, premier, junior, and junior as in previous years. Just important that people no, review. No, no, thank you for that. No, no, no. But I know where you were coming, and if it was a relegation, they would probably be the two. Listen, did you meet any of these teams along the way when you were refereeing during the year county league games? Would you know anything that we don't know, Evan? Um, yeah, I I would rest as a sex, and I would rest on Gaeltacht. Yeah. Um, Gaeltacht are purely a team in transition. They're very young. Yeah. Uh, a lot of minors. Um, I do believe Rob Shea has gone travelling to Australia, so he's a massive loss from the middle of the field. Yeah. And Kyle Ling has recently transferred to Dublin, to a club in Dublin for the Dublin Championship. So again, an experienced head at the back, missing for them, like you know. Mm -hmm. So. Um, but on the positive side, for on Gaeltacht, Rory O'Begliuk, you'd all know him here, it's Kerry Minor here in the yeah. city. He's, he's nearly back from a second cruciate, so he'll be a big addition to that forward line, yeah. and he will take some of the scoring burden off Dara. Um, yeah. Dara is unerring, in fairness, and from freeze, you know. But I wouldn't go on Gaeltacht's county league form. They're missing PJ McLaughlin, they're missing Keenan mm -hmm. Like They're too good. Two very good defenders, like mm -hmm. you know, um, Stax, Ulla Barman, Joey, Joe O'Connor, Dylan Casey coming back into it, like yeah. you know, Petty Lane is playing bits and pieces from his under twenties. He's going to be starting. Yeah, you know, they're, they're they're going to be good, like they're going to be lively. Yeah, you know, but look, it, it's a very hard group to call because Glimby are the only team to have beaten the Stax this year. Mm -hmm. They beat him in Glimby in the county league, two eight to six points. Mm -hmm. um, they're playing defensive football with a with a quick break. Yeah. yeah. So look. So you're suggesting that Glenbeck Glencar, my club obviously, uh, could actually take down uh, Stacks. I'm just pointing what has happened this year so far. I'm not yeah. saying right. who, who, who'll win and who won't. Very, so. very good. Now on to somebody who knows something about football uh, after <laughs> listening to Evan. Uh, <laughs> come out with that theory. Uh, Niall, uh, obviously you are operating a higher plane. So you're probably looking down at the intermediate grade, although Crokes can be there in a couple of years, the way you're going. Anyway, um, Pat O'Shea, if you watch this, I didn't mean that. Um, so what do you think of this group? Stax are a team. I mean, you, you played Stax so, so many you, years. Yeah. Stax, as you all said, is, is a formidable club, one of the best clubs in, in the country, talent-wise, coming out their ear. But you can only put 15 on the field. And with the 15 they put on the field, it then depends on the style of play. So the, the question I will have for Stax is, if you're going to come out with the style of play that you came out with last year, yeah. is that going to be good enough to get you over the line? We all agree that this is doggy dog. This is a doggy dog uh, division. Yeah. And you're, you're telling me then that um, the way we played last year is going to get us over the line. It'll get you so far. Mm -hmm. But when you come up against teams who are expansive and who are going for it, so the challenge will be for Stacks. Yeah. Can we incorporate all the fellas who are coming back over the last three or four weeks and get them up to speed and get them the way we want them to play? And then are we confident in the style of play that we play that can win this competition? Yeah. From what I saw last year, I, I, I really do think, and I, I commentated on that game, they lost over there last year. Yeah. Um, yeah, right. yeah. And and we kept asking the question, when are you going to come out and play? When are you going to come out and play? I, I have to agree with that. And the thing is, no, they were, they were putting up much bigger score lines. They were, let's face it, last, last year they came with Shane O'Callaghan with the pivots. And that was it. Mm -hmm. You know, everybody else was dropping back. This year, they played more over them in Division 2. But the caveat to that is, it's Division 2. It, so the the, the question, and if you're talking about the other game, yeah. Mark, I'm afraid... I'm going to put this banner in the works here now because, it, again, we've seen Gaeltic firsthand. Yeah. Yeah. Gaeltic, uh, and some people are saying they're in transition. I understand that. But when you see what they put out and how they play and how they're structured and their big physical team, Gaeltic will hurt people. Whether they score enough to beat people will be their challenge. Yeah. 
But I'll tell you, there isn't too many people going to actually beat them by a lot because they're very physical, they're very big, they're very structured, and they all can run and they all can play. Now, yes, you're right, Evan, 100%. Young Big Lee is a key. He's, he was on the under-21s yeah, with Declan. They need him. They need him. They need him. They so for me, a plus I'm going to I'm gonna throw, throw the Academy. I'm going for the Gaeltic to finish second in that group. In, in stacks, yeah. yeah. Well, I can tell you something. You would have a better chance if you went for the council, right? The count, you know, outside of your area of getting the vote in Glimba than you have in Gaeltic, yeah. which is tied up okay. back there. So that was that, for me. That was he the only one. It's your Darren. I'm going to tell you for free travel now. Oh, so that poor is poor old Darren. Poor old Darren. So that is um, that is a black mark against you. But however, everybody's entitled to their opinion. Now, just a one um, one word answer or just a, a couple of sentences. John Mitchell's versus Stacks. Mitchell's a six to one. Stacks eleven to ten. It's uh, Strand Road. Uh, it's on in Strand Road at four o'clock on uh, Saturday. I think it is. Um, who's going to win it? Uh, I think Mitchell's put it up to them for long periods of the county league game that they did have earlier in the season, but on this occasion it has to be Sacks. Aidan? Same, yeah. Uh, look, it's going to be a local derby. If John Mitchell show up for any game, it'll be for this game, but you can't see past that through. Uh, Jimmy? Even though it's going to be a local derby, I don't think they'll be able to save them at all. I think Sacks would turn it to spare. Evan? Uh, Sacks. Sacks. And Niall? Sacks. Sacks. Uh, Glenbeck, Linkar, we start with Niall this time because he doesn't like them against Ungeltuk. Ungeltuk yeah. actually stayed favourites for it, so right, you might Ungeltuk. be right. I'm we'll going for Ungeltuk, right? Evan? Just to go against Niall, I go Glenbeck. Absolutely. Is that the Glen Plesk Croaks thing? <laughs> I don't think Glen Plesk beat Croaks often, do they? Anyway, no. on to uh, no. <laughs> on to Jimmy Spa. I don't win much either, uh, Jimmy, do they? If them they were at full strength. I'm going to move on from that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if them they're at full strength, I fancy them. Glenbet, fine. I think they'll score You know where your bread is buttered, don't you? I, I do. It's not, look, it's on Kiel. They've been off Kiel at the back of their hands as well. Yeah, well. Um, Although but, they lost the championship game last year, did they there? But they've, yeah. um, they've got... You could go to, the ring, uh, go to them and say this could be a draw, but as the risk of me saying get off the fence, I'll say Glenbet, yeah. Glenbet. I was going in early, go the same answer that it might be a draw, but I'll also get off the fence and I'll say the Gale truck will nick it. Yeah. Well, uh, two years ago, what? two years ago, Glenbe beat the Gale truck in Kiel by a point. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. So, Mort, Mort, you, 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 you're hanging your hat on the Glenbe thing because you're from there. Yeah. So, put, put some substance in the hat. Tell us why you think Glenbe Well, beat I think the Gale Glenbe, uh, well, they play with red jerseys, I know that, right? Uh, but Glenbe are a team uh, I've seen a few times over the last couple of years I didn't see them in the county league this year uh, but they have some excellent players and any team that has yeah any team that has uh, Pat Kilkenny Gavin O'Grady you know um, and you have Caelan Tehan um, and you know Liam Smith at midfield um, they're good players they're used to playing rugged games against tough opposition, Milltown, Beaufort and Mid-Kerry, uh, you know, those, those tough geezers from Rangers. Um, so they know what it's like. I think they'll just have too much if they have everybody. So I'm going for Glenbeck Lincar just to edge out and go out and I think uh, Stacks would beat uh, John Mitchell's. That's, that's, that'd be my theory on those. So right, just dead on time, that first uh, session. And we are now. <laughs> we go back. To, we go back to sixth class and teach you the time. <laughs> Counting wouldn't be. Easy. Yeah, no, we would slide you over. Is... But that, I think now you were the, 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 the cause of that. Now on to our uh, next uh, group, and this is Group E, and this is an intriguing group, I think. Uh, and we'll probably go to um, to Aiden first, make the case for his club. We've Kenzo Rallies who went down. Um, last year they were beaten by Nagail in that, that playoff game and lost their senior status a Tralee team Kilcommon who were going very well um, until they met Milltown Castle Main they beat I think the Legion we commentated on that didn't we yeah. on top of a truck the beside Beatles. the middle of yeah. the field uh, and we got all wit uh, Lone Rangers who uh, are a very good side want to get back they have a councillor now in Podge Foley, and he is absolutely adamant that Long Rangers should be a senior club about 10 years ago um, and five years ago uh, when they were down in Division 4. No, they were never in Division 4. And finally, Listow Limits, who were last year's 
premier junior champions. All Ireland runners up. All Ireland runners up, yeah. yeah. So uh, this is considered the group of a dead. Actually, all the teams that treat them very equal, the store limits are outsiders, uh, according to the betting, and Kansas Alley's Kilcommon and Long Rangers are all around seven or eight to one. You know, we don't want to make betting a big thing, but it gives us an indication of uh, what form is like. Aiden, um, what do you think? Obviously, you've got to make a case for Long Rangers. I won't ask you, are Long Rangers going to win this group? I will. But uh, well, what do you think? Do it. yeah. It's a long time since they met on the um, first round of the county league, which was the 26th of March, or whatever date that was. Uh, long Rangers won that comfortably uh, that evening. Cairns are a different team completely to them. Um, if you're going to look at Cairns Rally's county league form, you look at the second half of their league form. Mm -hmm. they have, since we played them last, they've had... Tommy Welsh come back, they've David Warren back, they've Carl McCarthy apparently, Jack Savage, you've the Thomas Kennedy and Ben yeah. Hennepin and, and Daryl Connor from the early 20s. Jake Foley. They, Jake Foley, they've had a team in mm. again from, since, since the early on to the league. So they got off to a very, very shaky start to the county league. They look like sure things yeah. for relegation, but they pulled themselves out of it because. Last they, gasp, that yeah. was the victory of Belly Mac that got him out of jail. But they, again, they did put the. If you looked at round seven, you said, well, Cairns Rallies are gone in a way, we were just thinking, yeah. having looking at the table. Yeah, Jimmy but, was uh, right in that, actually, that they were gone. Go yeah, on. But, yeah. as I say, uh, so, like, if you're looking at form, you don't really look at Long Rangers finishing second in the league and then just the wide relegation, because the first five rounds of the league really was, no, it was, uh, it was nothing to look at for them. It's a really, that, that game, and it's the opener of the Intermediate Championship, obviously, it's is tomorrow night. Um, or, sorry, Friday, Friday night. night. Yeah. Uh, they, it's, it's, it's hard one to call. Um, we're, we're in the same position as we were when we played them. We have too many more back. Um, compared to last year, we were beaten heavily last year, but six or seven of our starting team were away between J1s and everything else. We don't have that position this year, so yeah. we're uh, a couple of injuries, a couple of key injuries, but other yeah. than that, we're fairly full swing. What do you think is... Are uh, rallies the biggest dangerous team? Can come on a very good side in this stall, obviously, are a good side. Uh, it all comes down to round two and round three, and who has to who has to go to the store will be a, that'd be a tough yeah. a tough trip. Uh, so who you know the store's home game? I don't think any of the three, albeit three of them, would be seen as better than the store or stronger or yeah. tighter than them. No, none of those other three teams want to go to the store, so uh, it's a hard one to call. Really, it's, it, as I say, pick pick two out of the three between the, between Kendrick and Rangers and Kilcommon. That is, this is, as you call it, the group of death. It's very yeah, hard to call. And you can't hard. write off your soul with the outsiders. So. Yeah, yeah. Jimmy, uh, you would know a lot about Kilcommon uh, because Vaughan and Kilcommon would be deadly rivals, I presume, in, in Killarney. And you're, you're bordering each other, aren't you? Uh, more or less. And you have tried to get over the border one or two twice and steal babies, but it hasn't worked. Um, so, uh, but Spa, all right, yeah. Even new keeper in Spa, have you? What's his name? All oh, right, yeah. Spar in the group, right? No, oh, Spar not this group. Okay, yeah. <laughs> Kill come and so. <laughs> that, that, that was a beautiful well done, swear. <laughs> well, done, <laughs> well done, Jimmy. That's more shut up. Yeah, yeah. That, was, that was a beautiful. Hello, Tell me about Kill come and. Um, I will say, I think Kill come are coming in a bit as dark horses here. That was an absolutely cracking game last year against Milton Castle Moon. And they yeah. could very easily have won it, you know? Yeah. And that, yeah. Which means that Kilcoma were there, thereabouts. A mm -hmm. couple of good young players have come in, stepped up, like some Keelan O'Shea and these. Mm -hmm. um, they have shooters, they have a lot of players who can score. Um, some likes of Brendan Keeney, Chris Leary, all of these. The O'Shea brothers, of course, yeah. yeah. Anything that beats them is going to have to be a very good team. So, I mean, they're dark horses. For me, the clear front runners in this group. Aidan is not going to thank me, and I'm not winding you up. I genuinely think that you have been very quietly and very cleverly coming coming and building and getting again, beating North Kerry in the County Under-21 Championship. And I'm not saying all those... Did they win it out? No. The <laughs> go on. Uh, but what I am saying... They don't have limited time here, March. Don't, don't, don't make me go on all night about it. Long, long Rangers can call on their bench step. They play good football, they know what they're doing. Yeah. They have bodies, they're fit, they're young, they're hungry, they have a very proud history and they want to get back to it. Yeah. Uh, I, I'm looking at Long Rangers coming Long Rangers, and who are you looking to come out with them quickly? 
quite honestly, it's a savage group. Like, it is, yeah. Rah- Rahins have had a tough couple of years. And you know, yeah. when you say they've got Tom Walsh and David Moore and that, Jesus, these are two of the greatest servants the county have ever had, and they're fantastic. They would die for the club. They are incredible. But Jesus says, you were looking at them to win games 15 years ago. Yeah, you know yeah, what I mean? yeah, this, yeah, yeah, you know, like, yeah. You know, 36 years old, I suppose, yeah. Tomas and these couple of young lads, there isn't enough young lads, there isn't enough youth there. They're, they're a team heading into transition and they need to do this. Club. That's, that's a very old, very proud club. Yeah. Right now, I don't see them as contenders. Right. And it's very hard, I think, the first year down to come back up straight away as stacks found. It's. Yeah, it's tough. Uh, listen, um, Evan, um, Kilcommon, uh, Listot, have you met them in your travels? Kilcommon, uh, you would know obviously being from yeah, East Kerry. I would do, yeah. And look, um, this is the group of Deathmort. There's mm-hmm. no two ways about it. Look at the other teams. Um, Listot, like, they're all putting them as outsiders in this group, but mm-hmm. Listot are very unlucky not to get promoted from Division 2. They lost the game below in Khmer by a couple of points and if they'd won that mm-hmm. they would have probably snuck up and third you wouldn't have it by any chance no no I wasn't no right, okay. but look they're down they're down on quite a number of bodies alright for the weekend um, from the team that lost the Ireland last year yeah. um, like Brian Sweeney's a massive last one he's yeah. a long term last one uh, Cahal Keane the goalie has retired and Joe right. McCarthy so yeah. they've a young lad in goal uh, Jack Enright he's a good yeah. goalie you know, but he's only out of minor yeah. And they have their three Kerry Miners as well from last year. You've uh, Pa Walsh, Aaron Carey and Aaron Kennelly. Kennelly, yeah. Yeah, do you know? So, so they're a young side. They're a young side. Yeah. And yeah. Niall Collins is in, is in America for the weekend. Yeah. He, he's not But Eddie Healy had a great under 20. And Eddie Healy, yeah. They're, yeah. they're young. And look, the Jojo Grimes at midfield is a doubt. Um, he has play, he played, I believe, last Friday night at centre-back. He got a half into him. So he will be an addition to, to him. Do you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah. So I would not be right now for Stoll in this very, group. Very good. Um, like, they've killed come on the weekend. That will be a struggle for both teams. Um, yeah. Do you think Lone Rangers will top it? Jeez. Uh, so is it too hard to call? It's really? very hard to call. Um, yeah. Look, Karen's rallies, I know you're saying Tommy Walsh and David Moore are 36 years of age. Yeah. Um, like, I like Jake Foley, he's a great piece of stuff. He's going to be with the Kerry Twenties next year. Yeah. Tomas Kennedy, Daryl O'Connor, yeah. they're all young. You have Ryan Carroll, yeah. we, we've seen him in the senior club, yeah. the, the last month's club. Uh, you have the old stages in like Barry John, Ross Callan, Con Barrett. Yeah. Like it's, you'd be a fool to say they're out of it, like, do you know what I mean? Yeah. And, okay. and like, you can read, count, they've, they have got experience into the young fellas playing County League earlier this year. Yeah. And they're going to be able to call on them Absolutely. when it comes to championship. Right? Yeah, and because they got harsh lessons yeah. in the first five or six going to league games, and then when the boys came back, do you know. No, the desire, I suppose, for Ren is to get back up. I mean, it was a huge blow last year to lose that game to Nagayan, and now there's only one senior club in Trilly, and to be fair, Nagayan are struggling. You know, so they need senior football. Okay, uh, stacks are back up in Division One County League, and they're going to be strong favourites to win the championship, to win the intermediate championship. What do you think of this? Do you think rallies could be a, a huge factor? Do you think Kilcommon could surprise and list all? Or do you think Rangers are the standout team? Um, Kilcommon won't surprise me anyway, because um, I think the big question with Kilcommon being a structured team and being a, a mature team and a really good team and one of the best teams we've played, they're not going to surprise me. The question for Kilcommon is a question that I had earlier on as well. Have they got a stud? Have they got a, somebody who can score? who can get them six or seven points in every single game in the full forward line. Mm-hmm. So I think the challenge will be for Kilcommon. Can we get Paul O'Shea inside full forward where he can be devastating? Mm-hmm. And can we expose people? I think the question you're asking me about the other teams, I think what Liam Hassett has done with Lone Rangers is phenomenal. Mm-hmm. And it comes through their grades. I saw their minor team last week playing against the Crooks. They beat us. Shane and Pierce were the managers. They were superb. Lovely brand of football. And Lone Rangers are playing a lovely brand of football. And that game the next day against Cairns Rallies is going to be young versus the old. And mm-hmm. it's going to be two teams that will go out and play football. Mm-hmm. And, you know, will it be a step too far for Lone Rangers? Yeah. I don't know because I think, I think Liam Hassett um, and Shane that's involved with, with, with Lone Rangers, 
Det er noget Karen Zavallis inside out. Men Liam lives there, married yeah. to one of the Dowling. Yes. So she and Ruff, she and she and Ruff, by the way, threat. Oh, she and Ruff, who played, played it. back for Karen Zavallis. Yeah, so yeah. they know so, enough. Yeah. So yeah. for me, if you're asking me, I I, I see Kilcommon coming out of the group. I think yeah. they I think they have strength. I think they're a good team and they're well drilled. Um, and and I think the game, the first game of this, Long Rangers versus Carnival is going to be an, af- an absolute dinger. So yeah. it'll come down to the last ten minutes, and then the question will be: Will the old legs have the, have have? Will it be in the legs, not in the head? Will it be in the legs to get them over the line? I think Hassett's going to have his fellas hopping out of their skin. Yeah. Will Carnival have it in the tank for the last ten minutes to win the game? Yeah, That's the question. Point, yeah. John, Listol for you, you'd know them out that direction. See them in North Kerry and you commentated them, I think, last year as well. Um, and uh, do you think that they have a realistic chance of being a factor in this group? Yeah, I think they'll take a scalp of at least one of the three teams. That mightn't be enough to get them out of the group because it's, uh, it's a shot in the dark for Listol now. The pressure's off them. They're up as junior premier champions. They can have a right good go at this. They are a young side. I think they will beat uh, one of the teams. I'm not sure it'll be Kilcommon this weekend because like Niall and a few others, I think Kilcommon will come out uh, possibly as top of the group. The, the Lawn Rangers, Cairns Rallies, I'm finding it very hard to decide between them because, like you say, there's one side on the up and there's one side potentially on the down. But at the same time, there could be, before they go into transition, there could be a last sting of a dying wasp element to Cairns or Rallies this year. I, I have a funny feeling, you know, the likes of David Moore and Tommy Walsh and all, Barry John Keane probably as well, like they're not... They're not just staying on there for the sake of it. They really do want to get them. It might be a tough task and nobody might be giving them a chance to come straight up out of intermediate ranks now. But I, I think they might cause a surprise on Friday night. Right. Now, I'll start with Niall and we'll just have a straight answer here because I'm a minute over time already. Uh, Long Rangers and Cancer Rallies, who would you fancy there? I'll go with Long Rangers. Long Rangers and, and then Liz Kilcoman. So Long Rangers, Kilcoman. What about you, Evan? I'll go a draw and Kilcoman. A draw between Long Rangers, Rangers and Cairns Rallies. Yeah, and you go for Kilcoman. Jimmy? Long Rangers, Kilcoman. Long Rangers, Kilcoman. Yeah, Long Rangers. What do you think of the second game? I was going to say, yeah. Head says Kilcoman, heart says Long Rangers for the second game. Yeah, yeah so Kilcoman and Long Rangers. Uh, and you, John? Yeah, I'm going to go Cairns Rallies and Kilcoman. Cairns Rallies. So you're against Long Rangers. No. You don't like Kilarva. You don't like the people, his people, Liam Hass's people, the great people that came from Kilarva. I went to school there. You're insulting me as well. That's fine. Uh, right, so that's... <laughs> Before we move on, it's, it's worth noting it's the first, it's the first game of our championships on, on cover this year. So it is, it is sure to be a great game as what he said. Absolutely. It's a game. And again, we'll remind you, you can get the annual pass and uh, log in to cover because that's where you're going to see all the games um, the important ones and, and other ones as well all throughout the club championship in August and September and we'll be on the county championship then right into the county final um, which takes place in the last weekend in October um, so look um, and the beauty about this year's championship club championship is that the final of all the club championships this year will be held before the senior county championships that's possibly bar the junior one because of Billy Duff's, Billy Duff's involvement in the hurling that might not be possible and the reason this year that there is such a rush to get things done and you have clubs complaining that they can't get a postponement is because um, this year we didn't reach the All-Ireland so we're not guaranteed uh, buy into the semi-final of the Munster competitions and therefore um, the Munster we'll have to have clubs ready to start in Munster on November the 10th. So that's the second group done, Group B, Group C I think is probably uh, pretty straightforward but it mightn't be and that's Bally Dunahoo are involved, Beaufort who have come so near and yet so far um, in winning an intermediate title. Uh, Desmond's, um, not to be underestimated in any way. And of course, Fossa, the team who were beaten uh, last year in the final. Uh, oh, that was Premier? No, it was no, no, right. yeah. beaten in the final last year um, and came up having won the All Ireland the year before at Premier Junior. So 
I can't believe Foster's price of 12 to 1 to win it. And I can't believe that they're playing Beaufort in the stadium on Saturday night for Shell Stadium at 5 o'clock. And they're 9 to 4 against, while Beaufort are 2 to 5. Now, again, uh, uh, Evan, I, I'll start with you this time. Why would you think that Beaufort are fancied so much to beat Fossa? Um, I think we're, we were talking earlier about the, la the dying sting in the Wasp. Um, yeah. I do believe Beaufort had a big team meeting at the end of last year um, with their management and they've seen what's going on around the district and they believe they should be there themselves. Yeah. And I, I think the addition of Alan Van as a strength and conditioning coach has brought him up another level. Mm -hmm. I know they're without the two Dinahy brothers, but they have, um, they're super fit. I've seen them this year. They're hopping off the ground. Um, they have good forwards, in the likes of Darrell O'Connor, Jack O'Connor, uh, Kieran Kindy's back from injury, and of course we all know about Liam Carey. Yeah. And then you just throw into the mix, Ronan Murphy, uh, Mike Green and Sean O'Brien. So yeah. they have a very Sean strong... Coffey and goals. Uh, Sean Coffey's in the goal. Sean Coffey might not necessarily be in goals. Mm. He's, okay. played, he's been playing full forward for most of the country league. Oh, they're doing a shell around in it. They're a young lad called Phil O'Neill, the good goalkeeper, so they're a good chance yeah. to be able to do it. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, so like they have a strong spine. Um, but then you look at Fossa, the addition of Kieran Sullivan this year from Nemo, uh, ex Kerry Minor. He's playing full back or centre back. He's a serious addition for Fossa. He's from Cremon, wasn't he's he? He's from yeah, Cremon yeah. originally, yeah. He, he was with Nemo there for a while. Mm -hmm. So then, like, you've, you've obviously David and Paddy, and yeah. you've him at Chain forwards. But, like, Kieran coming in at centre back can release Paddy to the 40 for Fossa, mm -hmm. and he can dictate it. Um, You've, you've Keno Shade in the middle of the field with Matt Rinney. Uh, like Friday's game or Saturday's game, it's going to be intriguing to end the park between Beaufort and Fossa. And you, you'd be a brave man to call it, like, you know. Yeah. What about Desmond staying in Bally Dunhu? Uh, Bally Dunhu, I've done Bally Dunhu a bit this year. I saw them earlier yeah. in the league against Churchill. And yeah, so like they're the aligned big time on Jack and Ellie in the forward. Absolutely, I agree. Do you know what I mean? You'd have Shanna Khan. They'll have Jason Foley for the first game. I do believe he's going travelling after that. Um, like, again, they're experienced. Uh, yeah. Against Desmond's, who are young. You'll have the likes of Brian Leonard, Keen Downey in the boys. Yeah. Uh, it's going to be very hard to call that game as well, like, you know, in Brasna. Yeah. Um, Niall, uh, Fossa, you would know Fossa pretty well. Um, and uh, do you think that there is... Um, I mean, they're an insult to 12 to 1, I think, to win it out. I would rate them one of the top four intermediate teams in the county, definitely. Um, obviously, Stacks are number one, but I, I would say um, that if the Clifford's hit form and with Kieran O'Sullivan back in at the back now, um, as Evan was saying, and they still have Matt Rainey and the O'Shea's Emmett and Keane, like, they haven't, they're not going to go away, I don't think. No, no. I, I, I did a lot of the Fossa games last year and I have to tell you, so impressed with the way they play the, play the game, but I'm also so impressed. You have to think they played in the County League Division 2 this year and you've, you also were, saw where they came. They, they were very close to, get, to going, getting promoted. Without the two Cliffords and Young Colleran, we yeah, haven't yeah. mentioned him, he's a serious player as well. He's a, a really, really good player. And on his day, Young O'Shea, Emmett O'Shea can be one of the best forwards in the county because... Mm -hmm. It, 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 there's a lot of attention, but not, not even that. He has the talent. Mm -hmm. He is a good player. And if Adrian Sheehan can get enough out of him. I, I, of all the games this weekend in Kerry, this is the biggest game for me. I yeah. would, I, I, this is the game that I would enjoy watching. Have Beaufort got it? Yeah, they have all the talent. Have they gotten over the line? No, they haven't. Yeah. So Fossa are coming from a, a, a position where they had one of the greatest runs in their history the year before. Last year they had a great run in this competition. They're on a high. Where will Paddy and, where will Paddy and David be yeah. after last week with Kerry? Uh, um, is it going to be a place where when they play with Fossa the shackles are off and hey, we're, we're back. David Clifford's getting his 1-8 and Paddy Clifford's running through everyone and, and, and being the player that he is, which is amazing. Yeah. You know, um, so for that game, I, 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 and, and I, I, I don't sit in the fence, so I'm going to tell you straight up, I'm calling that game a draw. A draw. A draw. And that's not sitting on the fence. No. That is it's, fact. It's just too hard to Two call. really good teams. It's, yeah. And I think for us to be talking about Fossa in that 
terminology so quick in their, in their rise as a club over the last six or seven years. We wouldn't have been talking about them in six or seven years ago in this, no, no, this no, calibre no, no. is amazing for the club. And if you're talking about Ballydunahoe and Desmond's, I, I, I kind of been watching the results with Desmond's over the last couple of months and the question will be, can they turn it around? Can yeah. they turn a switch? Yeah. Um, so for me, um, Bally Donahoe, I think, might be tough enough for him that, on that day. But then, as you were saying, Jason's going away. This whole thing, I think, this whole division goes down to Beaufort and Fossa. Yeah, they'll probably be the two. Jimmy, would you disagree with that? Um, I fancy Bally Donahoe to take them definitely. No, it was in the North County Championship when I saw Bally Donahoe, but I thought they were absolutely outstanding. Fuss and Beaufort, I agree, two great teams, love watching them, and as cliche as it is, the Clippers are just that extra couple of points, I think they would just barely be able to get Fuss over the line against their neighbours. It could go any which way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Aiden, it's an intriguing clash. Beaufort, um, you have spoken about them. Do you think that they can beat Fossa? Yeah, I think we, I said that three earlier on today, actually, yeah. spotted we were talking about the, those prices you were talking about. Yeah. Said, as I say, betting isn't everything, but I was saying I couldn't get over the price of Fossa because the, the difference in, in the, there's very little between the teams. I agree with that. I think it's draw all day. Um, I'm on commentary for that game, actually, so I'm looking forward to it. Yeah. But uh, the, um, the, the Beaufort team, on their day, like Mike Green, Sean O'Brien, uh, they're eating coffee. Uh, he's yeah. back there. He's a he's a top top player. He'll yeah. be. I'd hope to see him in the jersey this year. I think he's come back. He played a few games last year. But yeah. He's he's a, a very good defender. Um, as I mentioned earlier, Sean Coffey is bringing that little extra uh, something else out, outside from full forward position because he's a big boy. He's six foot yeah. four or five, and he's a great pair of hands. And he's he's Mary Jo Corn's son by the right, way. Mary Jo Corn's son. Yeah. So. He would have football. But he's releasing, you know, um, young Daryl O'Connor, younger brother of Jack O'Connor. He's, mm-hmm. he's having a fabulous year. Uh, Kieran Dinney, I'm not sure his fitness, how close to fitness is he, but the brother, Dara, is a very, very good player as well. So it's what they can get out of their their forwards. And as we mentioned, that we, we don't need to talk about Liam Carey is on yeah, his day. Is that game changer? Yeah. As, as uh, Niall got it, a stone player that can hit you six or seven points. Yeah. Um, as it happens, I have to see Beaufort and Desmond's in the county league uh, yeah. for future, and Beaufort blew them away uh, on yeah. the day, and that, that was without county players. So uh, we haven't mentioned the likes of Nathan Green and those sorts as well. They're just a yeah. seasoned team. You know? yeah. So you would think probably Beaufort and Foster will come out of that yeah. group. Yeah, John, you would know Belly Dunno obviously and Desmond's, and you know a good bit about Foster as well. What are your thoughts on it? I think the current price of around 12 to 1 about FASA is an insult and uh, disrespectful of FASA, especially the fact they were runners up last year and just barely runners up in an epic encounter against uh, Milton Castle Main. The Kieran O'Sullivan is a huge asset. They have a very good management. They're used to winning. Um, like Niall said, it, it, returning to their club is a bit of a kind of a safe haven now for the Cliffords like and they, they, they are two players that can decide any game on any occasion if they're at their best. Um, I'm not going to sit in defence either this weekend. I think uh, a wounded Clifford is a, is a very wounded animal. I think Foss are going to come out and the Cliffords are going to come out and I think they're going to beat Beaufort on uh, Saturday. Uh, possibly both teams will go on and come out of the group uh, no matter which side loses at the weekend. The Bally who a lot depends on what the playoff defeat uh, has taken out of them in Division 3. Like That was a big thing for Liam Weir and the boys to try and get up out of Division 3 and they lost that playoff yeah. to Kiel. You know, it was, a, it was a tough one for them. Desmond's uh, been very up and down. Uh, Jack Kennelly could be the difference. Uh, a lot might depend on maybe what Desmond's decide. Would they put Brian Leonard all the way back uh, on Jack Kennelly? And if you do that, if you keep Jack Kennelly quiet, you beat Belly who generally. So. Yeah. Yeah, that's yeah. I've seen Belly Dunno and they depend a lot on him. Um, they're good defence. They're tough. They seem to foul a lot though, and they wouldn't want to do that against Desmond. So 
I wouldn't be too sure about Paddy Dunhu beating uh, Desmond's in that one. I do think Beaufort and Foster's an intriguing clash, and just like Nigel said, I couldn't call it. We just go around uh, Beaufort, Foster. Who's going to win that? I'm going to go Foster. Uh, you? I think draw. I said it already. A draw. Yeah. Foster. A draw. A draw. Two draws, and we had Foster twice, wasn't it? Um, now, Belly Dunhu and Desmond's. I might go Desmond's to nick it. Yeah. Also Desmond's, I think. Yeah. Desmond's. I'll go up the trend. I think Belly Dunhu. Absolutely, you're a rebel without a cause. Uh, no, I don't know. I don't know. Not a I just yeah, wonder, yeah. can Desmond turn the switch? Can yeah. they turn it up? And they're great players. We yeah, all know yeah. that, but they haven't been firing. So can they fire? I hope they can, because it'll make for a great game. If they can replicate some of the form they showed last yeah. year, yeah. Yeah. the, the uh, quarterfinal. So, so yeah. silent, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's, that's, that's Group C, lads. And just a reminder again, we do uh, every group really. All these games. And throughout the competition, the club championship and beyond, you're going to be able to see them live and exclusive on Clover. So I would ask you to consider buying an individual game or the real way of doing it is buy the annual pass. I think it's 149 odds, so we'd say 150 euro, but you get all the championships in Kerry as well as championships from Watford and Hurling, Tipperary, Longford, all over the country does darts. Uh, which uh, Niall is good at, and Formula One uh, racing, uh, which uh, John is very fond of. So there's loads of stuff uh, on it, and snooker, which is Jimmy's game. The big, uh, the big uh, thing on it wrote was the fact that if you had a random pass, you can go back and watch the games again. So yeah. if you attend the game, yeah. you can watch all the games. So yeah. You can watch every game from this weekend if you have a random pass. Yeah, I actually watched uh, the hurling game that I <coughs> was at by son John, the Kilmoyley Billy Duff game. When I went home that night, I had to watch it again. It was on mute. Every game. <laughs> <laughs> Just, there, was, yeah. there, was, there was a first <laughs> breeze, there was a breeze <laughs> blowing there, sorry John. <laughs> yeah, well, I would just say that I was commentating in John on the first game, Abby Dorney, it was Eden and, uh, and, and Pip that was doing the uh, second game, and that's a great insult to two very professional <laughs> uh, for a man who is a good DJ but a very poor commentator. <laughs> now, um, we're on to the, tour, or the, the final group, Group D. And Group D involves, he's, uh, unfortunately, he had another commitment. So Evan has left the panel, as he spotted through uh, the last preview piece. So we're now down to four. Um, it's like the green bottles thing. Um, so we've Glenn Flesker in there. Nivi Gula. This is like a, a South Kerry championship thing. Uh, Killarney Legion in there. Loved by everybody in this panel, Killarney Legion. Uh, St. Mary's then, who seem to be forgotten in the betting to win it out, they're considered 100 to 1 chances. But I suppose what Brian Sheenan goes, they have they are going to through uh, transition, no Conan in charge. They have a lot of young new players coming along, so this might be a bridge too far. But I wouldn't uh, uh, underestimate uh, St Mary's chances either. So I think we might start with Niall this time, since there are three. Are we, no, actually, no, we won't because he talks too much. We will start with uh, Jimmy. Uh, Jimmy, Glenn Flesk, Neve Gilla and Killarney Legion, three teams, and obviously St Mary's. What are your thoughts on this one? Are you, he's carried obviously strong there. Are Glenn Flesk good enough to win that group out? If Glenn Flesk were at full strength, and when I say if, I mean my understanding is that they're not, mm -hmm. or anywhere too close to it. Unfortunately, they're down a lot of bodies. If they had everyone, if you're looking at the Roach brothers, Luke Crowley, Patrick Darcy has been absolutely flying this year, Tommy Bowler, uh, look, I, 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 I'm Kevin Jane, Cronin, I would genuinely man. have them up there with Long Rangers just behind stacks in terms of the overall competition. That's how high I would rate them. Yeah. But the thing is... They're third or fourth favourites at 6-1, to one, by the way. That, that's at that full you, Yeah. And, and at full strength, I can absolutely understand that. They have yeah. everything. Do you know? Yeah. They've, they've got young players in, the likes now, Jamie Moynihan, Kean Lynch, Owen Kelly, all these lads. Yeah. So they have panel depth. They have shooting forwards. They, they have strength. They have a good style of play. They know what they're doing. If they have the bodies on the field. Yeah. Same yeah. thing can be said about Legion. Legion, yeah. my understanding is that Will Shine, Billy McGuire, 
uh, film by Murphy, Ryan Grady. I, I'm hearing that these lads aren't going to be available this weekend. No, I watched Legion through the county league. I watched them last year. And even, even last year in the Intermediate Championship, I'm sorry, but Finbar Murphy was putting up his hand for scores, not just the freeze, he was looking for it for play. But they didn't have other forwards. They were led well shine, and he's a phenomenal talent, and he'd be badly missed, you know. Yeah. Everyone hoping he'd come back from injury. But at the same time, he has yet to produce in, in a senior club jersey what he did for the carry under 20s, where he was absolutely phenomenal. Mm-hmm. And that's the kind of thing that Legion need. Yeah. I mean, if, if, you, if you were to ask me right now, hand on heart, who's Canary Legion's most dangerous forward? Yeah. It is still absolutely James O'Donoghue. I and I go back to the point I made about Tommy Walsh and David Moran. You can't be looking to the guys who were winning you games 15 years ago to win them now. You need more. So I, I, I think that there won't be shadow boxing. They will both go out this weekend with everything that they have. I don't think they have what they should have. Uh, Guinea Gula, for me again, no. You kind of you look at the star players and Glenn Flesk and Legion have star players. Guinea Gula, I mean they They're tough. They, they lost in Milton by a point, I think, in the first game last year, and they just couldn't quite close it out and they couldn't get out of the group. Yeah. But they were as good as what I saw out there. And to be quite honest with you, if you get on top of Guinea Gula, they they will stay on the ropes and keep coming at you. They are very, very hard to put down. Watch out for Guinea Gula. I think that would be a surprise here. So Guinea Gula and, Cl- and uh, Glenn Fles could be your choices from there, I take it. <laughs> but I know Pat Warren. <laughs> yeah. I know Pat Warren was in America for the summer. I saw him tagged out in, in his name on the team sheet for the Kerry New York team. Is he yeah. back for a long run? I don't think so. Oh, no, I don't think they're, so. They're, they're, down, Niall, they're, they're down about 10 players. Niall, your <laughs> specialised subject is, and I know you'll love this, Killarney Legion. Now, in less than two minutes, can you tell me why Killarney Legion can never be... No. Why Killarney Legion uh, have a chance here? They've got him a grand charge now. There were a lot of young talent in, in the club, and he have found difficulty always when he played them. He beat them a lot of times, obviously. He's carried championships, etc. Uh, but they do put it up to you. Um, so, how close are they to being a factor or a, a threat in this intermediate championship? Um, if they had everybody available, yeah. they were a threat. Yeah. They don't have everybody available and that's the harsh realities of this competition and also this competition and none of us have actually spoken about it is you're going to be playing four games mm-hmm. in four weeks. Yeah. So what have you got on the bench? Because there's no team there's no team going to go through this competition without injuries. Yeah. So there's if... There's no way your first 15 in the first game is going to be there. No. Game. no way. And, yeah. and from a Legion point of view, you're missing so many as it is, and 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 you're you're right in terms of where they're going to get their scores, but defensively the Legion are solid, midfield they're solid, they're yeah. decent enough. They give you a platform. Brian Kelly back from his only one for goals. Yes. Yeah. 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 But the big thing is from from a Glim Flesk point of view. When is the time to step up and win one of these competitions? Is it now with Seamus Moynihan and Pat Flanagan driving a man? Yeah, yeah. they're missing a few. But they'll have those back for later on in the competition. Yeah. Um, can they get over the Legion the next day? I think they can. Yeah. But the key to me for this whole group, and you were mentioning Guinea Guilla, yes, St. Mary's are in transition, and I'm not speaking down on St. Mary's. I just can't see them winning a game in this group. Yeah. Um, and I think Guinea Guilla win their first game. So they go into the next two games and say, hey, can we manage to get one more win out of the next two? to get us out of the group. That's all we need to do, get to yeah. the semi-final, where, or get to wherever we need to get to, yeah. and we'll be competitive then. Yeah. So for me, I, I, in that group, I, I'm going to go with Lymfleski and Guinea Gwilla. And you know, I'm a bit like Jimmy, I think Guinea Gwilla might, might actually shake the top of the top, top that group like. Yeah, yeah. John, what do you think? Obviously, um, Killarney Legion are a team Along like stacks, they, they, they drop down. Now, rallies are down. And you'd expect Legion, they had Peter Keane up to this year, yeah. Uh, he stepped away. And I think Peter, yeah, Peter is a man, you know, who, if he can't work the with the team, you'd wonder if the same group of lads, 
what the story is now. Gary McGrath is excellent. He has been at college's level. He was involved with Cremorne and other teams as well. So, what do you think? Can Legion, this is the, the I think St Mary's would probably struggle just because of the nature of, of the group. It's great to see them in. They will come. Um, I think Jim Flesk speak for themselves. I think Neil Guilla will always be there, thereabouts. But what about Legion? They're an enigma. Yeah, most certainly. Like uh, they'll always be one of the so-called favourites for the competition, especially after being up in the senior ranks. Um, again, like as Niall said, if they had a full team, and if Glenn Flesk had a full team, you'd probably get one of the games of the championship this weekend. I agree that I think Glenn Flesk are capable of beating Legion and potentially going farther than Legion in the competition. And Guinea Guill are definitely so dogged, and they might have that extra club togetherness that maybe even though they're all clubs obviously but Guinea Guilla really have that togetherness that maybe some of the other teams might struggle to replicate on a consistent basis. St Mary's I've seen them this year because they're the only team in Division 3 um, that are in this intermediate competition they, they played us uh, out in Tarbert and we beat them that night. They still have like they, they do have some very good young players coming through like Keen O'Donoghue and uh, Alex Coffey and a few more and the uh, Cornan uh, brothers up front yeah, they score a lot Anthony and uh, Sean and young yeah. Ben O'Donoghue is another lively um, young forward um, it will probably be difficult for them but did, I suppose they did have the recent playoff relegation uh, victory over Anna Scal, which will have given the club just a boost because they certainly didn't want to be going down to Division 4 like a proud club like uh, yeah. and a big town in Car Sivine so I'm not sure whether they're capable of pulling up a scalp in the division, but I kind of agree with Niall. I, I think maybe Glenn Flesk and Guinea Guilla might get through. Yeah, I think um, Guinea Guilla have uh, a game against St Mary starting off. That should get him a win, and with a win, that's huge. And then if they can take the scalp of Glenn Flesk, our legion along the way, and one of them is going to be at home, well, uh, they would fancy their chances. So I think uh, Glenn Flesk and possibly Guinea Guilla will come out as well. But I do fear, feel there's a sting. You know, they, they might be kicked back by Legion. They've been written off by a lot of people, pundits, probably their own supporters, etc. So it's time now to kind of, you know, stand well, up and be counted. They are a big yeah. animal now. Yeah. They're a big fish in, the, in a small pond now. Yeah. And, and the Legion can beat anyone on their day, including yeah. us. Yes. Including anyone. Yeah. So, like, like I agree 100% with what you said. There could be a sting there too, like. They could, yeah. And the thing is, Legion know that if they just get it right this weekend and they yeah. beat Glenn Flesk, they're automatically favourites to top the group. They are, yeah, because they'll still have St Mary's, etc. to play. Uh, right, let's go through them. Newgill and St Mary's. I think we all are of the opinion that Newgill are going to win that. Yes. No, the centres. I wouldn't take it for granted. Uh, yeah. Uh, I was at that game in Milton a couple of weeks ago. So they only yeah, saw yeah. That was a big moral victory mm -hmm. for yeah. They've been relegated two years in a row. It halted a, a three-year consecutive sliding down from one to four. Yeah, and you could feel you could feel it in them. There, it, 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 yeah. it seemed to matter for them. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. Um, you mentioned most of the names: the young lad there, Conor O'Shea, excellent there, Adam Kerr. They have the players. I would like to be any of the other three teams going on to Conkey and Park. Yeah, that's uh, really difficult. You know, yeah, um, be tough. so I wouldn't sleep on them. Yeah, uh, Brian Brian Sheehan's in goals. He, that evening, he was carrying a, a hamstring strain or some sort of strain. That meant he didn't take the freeze, and that was a very strange one not to see him come up the field and take, yeah, take the freeze. freeze yeah. But uh, I wouldn't necessarily sleep on them, but I can see right that they're, you know, yeah, the other yeah. three would certainly be ranked higher than them. Yeah, and Jim Kesk and Legion? Uh, I think they're best. Jim Kesk, Jimmy? Um, Gilly Gunner, I, I think we can all agree, to be honest, avoiding the drop to Division 4, yeah, it, it might be a boost for a club. But it, it, it's not intermediate contention. Mm -hmm. This 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 is a higher level than that, yeah. to be honest. Glenn Pace, can you um, your great friends in the Legion? Like I say, it's the fact that if if you can actually put out the two team sheets, yeah, I, right, I, I know, who, I know yeah. who the lads are, and then I'll tell you. Yeah. At at the moment, I will say <clears throat> they're both out at full strength. I give it to Glenn Flesk by a couple of points. That's as much as I can tell you right now. Niall, the Glenfest Legion won. You're kind of on my boat. That's tough. No, to uh, uh, I'm a bit like Jimmy. If, if the Legion had everyone, yeah. But the likes of Young Shine missing, the likes of Ryan O'Grady and all of these fellas not firing at the moment. Um, to me, I think 
yeah, Glenfless are missing a few as well. So it, it, it could get tight, but I just think Glenfless might have a little bit too much down the stretch. So I'm going Glenfless, and I and it's, uh, I hate going against one of my best buddies in Brian Sheehan, but. Um, I've Guinea Gwilla for that one. My mother's from Guinea Gwilla. I can't, I can't forget that place. Like <laughs> no, <laughs> and you can't, no, and you'd be thrown out of the house and home. Um, yeah, so there are four groups. Now I'm just going to ask them for uh, the ultimate winner. Okay, it's only the first round. We need to know who the pairings will be in the second round and the third round, etc. So we're a long way out from the final. There's a quarter final, the top two from each group of qualified quarter finals. Then we have semi final, and then we have the final. And that will be, as far as I know, um, that there'll be five weeks in a row. Six I'd, weeks. Six September weeks. 7th is September the seventh is the final. So if you're going to win this final, as the lads were saying earlier, you need twenty-one to twenty-five players. You're not going to do it with fifteen or sixteen. So I'm going to nail my colours to the mast first because, uh, and I'm going to say, I can't look for some strange reason beyond the favourites, Austin Stacks. So I know the Austin Stacks don't particularly like me because um, they think I give them a hard time. I don't, right? Um, but I do think on this occasion they are worthy favourites to take it out. There are dangers. I think Foster Beaufort uh, are dangerous, definitely, and Kilcommon and Long Rangers are the dark horses. But my, my vote goes to, um, to Stacks to win the intermediate title this year. John? Um, I can't disagree. I think. Oh, that's great! And uh, it, I think uh, <laughs> I think Stax have one of the best uh, conveyor belts of young up and coming talent. I think everyone appreciates what's coming through the ranks there. They have plenty of experience as well. They have the Kerry fellas coming back into it, like all the Kerry players with all the different clubs with points to prove after the Armagh game and, and, and seeking retribution wherever they can find it now over the next five, six weeks just to get them back on the horse and get going again. Um, I think they're the, probably the panel in the competition that can withstand the injuries maybe the most. If they lose players, they will have loads of options uh, to come in and, and replace them. And the likes of Daniel Kirby and Paddy Lane and a few more of them, they have really refreshed not just uh, the team, but they've kind of refreshed the whole panel and the whole club this year. Obviously, the pressure is on them um, because, like I said at the very start, it's, it's sink or swim now for the management team and for everyone connected with the club. They, 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 they won't accept a second year without winning this Intermediate Championship. I'll put it like that. Yeah. So I think uh, they are the strongest team and they should win it. Right, uh, Aidan, we won't embarrass you in terms of, obviously, your heart says Long Range is and you want them to win, but who are I don't think my head in the work, so I'll no, stick well, with Long Range. Well, I, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You're going to stick with Long Range? Yes. Yeah. You don't expect to say any other word than that now. <laughs> <laughs> well, I thought there'd be some reason to you other than, I mean... Art says Long Rangers, and the head doesn't think very much after that, so yeah. Yeah, well, yeah, that, <laughs> Jimmy said that to me in advance, he said, like, you know... Don't expect Aiden to think too hard. But that, 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 I need Jimmy now. Jimmy. No, I agree. Of course, us and yeah. are, are, when you go through the, they yeah. could feel two teams that would beat most of the teams in the competition. Yeah. But as, as Lloyd said earlier on, you can only put 15 on the, on the field every yeah, day. And it will come down to, yeah, yeah. It'll come down to the day. So. Favourites don't yes. always win the intermediate championship. Jimmy, who would you fancy be? If the draw works out so that the two best teams meet in the final, I'd be expecting Austin Stacks to beat Long Rangers and I would be expecting Austin Stacks genuinely to go on and win an intermediate club all Ireland. That's where they should be looking at. That's for me, that's the kind of strength and depth that they have at the moment. And that's why you're on this panel and you get big money for that kind of punditry. Now for a man who wouldn't be in the same class as you. I guess no money. I guess but, no money. <laughs> now um, very simple. I, 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 I'm the same as everybody else. There is, yeah. there is no doubt that it's, it's Aston Sachs to go all the way to Croke Park. Mm -hmm. But the question mark is still there. Yeah. If you're going to play the brand of football you played last year, is that going to get you enough to win in All-Ireland? Or is it going to enough to get you out of carry? Mm -hmm. So I'm going to go a little bit different than everybody else. Yeah, I'm going to say Stacks without a shadow of a doubt. If you want me to put my money on somebody right now, yeah. it's Aston Stacks. They have everything. Great yeah. club, great people. Do you want me to... Do you know yeah, what I'm going with? Need no, no, do you know what I'm going with? If you say i got to back somebody other than yeah. Lone Rangers, I'm going with Fossa. Fossa. 
Have you players from Fossa playing with you in Crokes? No. No, right. No, okay. we have them in spot up. Oh, you have them in spot up. Yeah, I know that, Jack. Yeah. 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 The boys in Kilcombe are watching now saying, you have them in the Crokes. We do, yeah. we do. Yeah. Yeah. All um, I'm saying is keep them coming. I, I, yeah. I, and, and, and you know the reason I'm going with Fossa? is if they get on a roll and the two Cliffords are playing with the freedom of the park like they had in the last championship, they have, they, they have something. They have something. And I, I felt yeah. it yeah. last year watching yeah. their games. They have something. They have something all over the field. And in Rennie, and I never mentioned him earlier, he's a big beast. He he's a big he, boy. Yeah. Yeah. He's a good he player. Well. Good player. Yeah. He should have played a little bit more for East Kerry, in my view, last yeah. year. Yeah. Yeah. So... If you ask me to pick the winner, without a shadow of doubt, it's easy for us all to pick Aston Stacks. But yeah. the question mark I have yeah, for yeah, Aston yeah. Stacks is, if you're going to play the brand of football you played, are you going to be happy enough to get over the line with that? Yeah. So if you are, that's fine, you win it, best of luck to you. And yeah. I'll be at every game when they go up the country. But if you're asking me for your dark horse, my dark horse is going to be uh, Fossa. Yeah, they're, uh, Fossa are available at 12 to 1, if you want to put your money where your beak is. So that's the Intermediate Championship wrapped up. Uh, some good contributions are around there, I'm sure you'll agree. And again, um, I want to remind you that to see all those Intermediate games, some of the classics, see, you know, the David Clifford party, Clifford playing, um, see, you know, Sean O'Brien, Mike Breen, um, see the lads from, uh, you know, inter-county players from, you know, you have uh, Jason Foley playing with Bally Donoghue, there's, there's lots and lots of players, and Joe Connor obviously, Armin Henrik, and Dylan Casey with the stacks. Every team has something, either under 20, a minor, or whatever, that has come of age. And they're all very, very good teams. So, uh, if you want to see those games, we repeat again, Clubber, uh, get the link and sign up for an annual pass, because the annual pass is exactly uh, what will get you to see all these games as well as the senior club, the junior premier, and we'll have some junior games as well, of course. So, reminder to do that, and because that's the only place you'll see those games live and exclusive. All that's left for me to do now is to thank my panel. I can't thank Evan Horn because he did a runner before we discussed <laughs> Group 4, which was Glenn Flesk, of course. He didn't want to commit himself because when he'd go home, his mom Peggy would probably have his life. But instead, we have John O'Dowd, who played a blinder. Uh, John will be involved in the senior preview as well with us. John, thank you very much for travelling over the long journey. He came, he tried to come by ferry until he realised there was no water between Tarbert and Killarney. So he drove over. Uh, Aidan, for making yourself available, and we'll have you as well for the uh, senior um, championship uh, preview. And Jimmy Darcy, as always, quite calculated <laughs> and uh, not afraid to give his opinion. And we'll have him for the senior championship, but he is precluded from talking about his uh, beloved spa. <laughs> a man that has to leave us now, Niall O'Callaghan. Thanks, Niall. He had a great, uh, gave us great contribution there. But Niall has a council meeting now, and the council meeting, Niall Keller will be there as well, by the way, Niall. And it good is friend of mine. A good friend of yours, and it's about, you were both Fianna Fáil one time until you left. And now... No, uh, I was yeah, never, and, never in Fianna Fáil, Mark. I'm a bit like you, Mark, you have more clubs than Nick Faldo. Oh, well, uh, no, did, did you... Yeah, well, no, he may have met the Healy Rays on the way to, uh, over, uh, on the way to Kilgavin. But anyway, Niall, seriously, great contribution. And he, you'll be hearing him in commentary and co-commentary as uh, the summer goes on and Friday the championship night. goes on. And he's opening up on Friday night uh, with Evan Horn um, in the Austin Stack Park uh, for the opening uh, club game of the championship. So tune in to that one. Thanks, Niall, and good luck with your council work. The one thing I would ask you to do, I don't care about housing, I don't care about uh, VAT on pubs and hotels and the... Uh, I do. The, 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 I know you do. I want you just to do something about the dam tra traffic in Killarney. It's absolutely mental most of the time. Mort, and when we're going to games... Mort, we have yeah. helicopters in Killarney, we're okay. And everybody's <laughs> welcome to come to Killarney because it's the greatest town in the world. And that's why we have traffic. Thank you. Yeah, well, dear <laughs> petrol and dear hotels, come to Killarney, please. That's my answer, for Killarney. So thanks to Niall. And uh, over and out. That is us finished. And we'll be back later with a preview of the championship. Senior Championship.